Hello there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. There are a million of you here now. Pfft, what the heck? A million subscribers. That is absurd. That <laughs> shouldn't be allowed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have changed my life completely and it means absolutely everything to me. Thanks a million. <laughs> okay, that intro was not just a little bit cheesy, that was a whole cheese platter. I expected a little sprinkling of parmesan, we got the whole charcuterie board. Let's just talk about some books, okay? Recently, I have been reading a lot of silly little books for my silly little mental health. And I wanted to share some reviews with you, so I thought a fun way to do it would be to do it in a quick fire way. To add a little bit of danger, you know, a little bit of spice. <laughs> We might have quite different definitions of what fun means, but bear with me here. I'm going to be giving myself 10 minutes on the clock to talk about the 10 books that I read most recently. And so I have, here's one I made earlier. Just to add another element to this already <laughs> incredibly elaborate video, I wrote down the names of the 10 most recent books that I read and I put them into this glass. And I'm going to pull them out at random and give you my little review. Listen, I don't know, I thought it was a good idea in my head. Maybe we should just turn this into like an ASMR thing instead. But speaking of quickfire, I have something very cool to tell you about because one of my favorite apps ever, Blinkist, is the sponsor of today's video. I've been telling people about this for years now because Blinkist helps you to discover and understand powerful new ideas through books and podcasts. By condensing 5,000 different titles from 27 categories into a 15 minute summary of the key and crucial points. So you can get insights from books via their blinks and podcasts via their shortcasts and basically sound very clever at a dinner party. You're welcome. You can listen to them, you can read them or both and this is perfect for personal and professional growth and development and consume motivational content where it's all syrup and no waffle. There's tons of brilliant and best-selling titles but my personal recommendations would be Atomic Habits, Becoming and thinking fast and slow. And of course, I've secured you guys a cheeky little discount. Using the link in my description box down below, you can get a seven day free trial of Blinkist Premium and then 25% off of membership. You lucky sausage, don't say I don't treat you. Trust me, you'll actually be surprised how much you can fit in to 15 minutes. <laughs> Why did that sound like an innuendo? Get that out of your brain, you filthy thing. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Anyway, I'm gonna try and do 10 book reviews in 10 minutes. Let's go. Let's get 10 minutes on the timer. And I think I'm gonna put it here. Can you see that? Oh no, it's all going wrong. Man down, Jesus. Okay, stop delaying it. Three, two, one, let's go. Ah, ah, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Okay, uh, first one is Girl with the Louding Voice. I love this book. It is completely and utterly stunning. It's basically about the importance of girls' education and the rights of young girls. And I read this just after coming back from an educational charity trip to Cambodia where I met girls exactly like the main character of this novel who would have been married at age like 13 if it wasn't for education and this book um, is set in Nigeria but it has this one line which has completely stuck with me where she says that she wants her mind to be swollen with ideas not her belly to be swollen with a baby which is the reality for a lot of young girls that age in those conditions so Absolutely gorgeous, stunning, and really important and powerful and empowering book. Okay, right, next one. Um, this is Black Swans. This is by Eve Babbitt, and look, right, so when I read a book and I really love it, I fold down the pages where there's great quotes and underline my favorite quotes. I don't think I've ever, ever underlined so many things in one book, like seriously. Um, I wanna read you one line. Um, this book starts with the line, It seems that only people on TV who don't dye their hair these days are recently released captives. Like, the audacity to start a short story with that line, um, but Eve Babbitt gets away with it. This is all about LA in the 80s and 90s, and I think there are definitely like hits and misses. Some of the essays are way better than others. There's one on jealousy, which I absolutely adore and I keep thinking about. Um, but the ones about her kind of close friends are not quite as endearing, but still, um, I love her writing style. This is definitely a new favorite writer for me, um, and I can't wait to read more of her work. Okay, I did not think this through, because now I'm gonna put the book back and pick the next one out of the jar. Afterlives, this is by uh, Abdul Razak Gurner, um, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2021. Um, it is definitely an important book, and it's about the colonization of the area that we now know as Tanzania. Um, I'm forgetting to breathe. 
Okay, um, however, I found this book kind of underwhelming. Like, the themes, super important and something I was fascinated to learn more about, but as a novel, I think that this reads more like a history textbook than a fictional story, and so I just didn't find it quite as captivating. Like, you, you don't get to know the characters as well as I would have liked, they sort of always seem to keep you at arm's length, and uh, I wanted to, you know, embrace them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was sort of disappointed by that book, I'm not gonna lie, but um, I also don't have a Nobel Prize, so who am I to judge? Okay, um, we're doing pretty well with the timing so far, but um, I am stressed. Okay, The End of the World is a Cul-de-Sac is another book that I was sort of underwhelmed by. Um, this is by Louise Kennedy, it's another collection of short stories, but uh, I just didn't connect with it, I didn't really find it that engaging or compelling. Um, it's basically 15 stories, I think, about different Irish women and their dysfunctional relationships. There were a few stories, don't get me wrong, that I did really enjoy, but for me, this short story collection was more misses than hits, you know? Uh, there were skips. There were definitely skips. Um, Right, moving on from that, I actually bought that book specifically because of the title. The End of the World is a Cul-de-Sac is absolutely genius, so I really liked that. Um, and that was where the things I liked <laughs> pretty much ended. Uh, okay, not to do all the negative reviews in one go, but Ragnarok is a book, it's actually a very slim book that um, I bought on a bit of a whim on my way to the till uh, in a bookstore. I didn't love it, I thought this was going to reignite my love for Old Norse mythology, because I am a mythology stan, um, but unfortunately I found this incredibly boring and quite dull. It basically is like a retelling of the end of times from um, Norse mythology, which is known as Ragnarok, um, and they basically believed that soldiers were killed uh, prematurely because they were being chosen by the gods, they were the strongest uh, fighters, and so the gods needed them on their side for the end of times war. Um, and this book basically takes that concept and then puts it alongside and in the context of the Second World War, and I thought, oh my gosh, how interesting does that sound like? That is fascinating. However, this just fell flat for me. It basically does a lot of just explaining. Um, it's not a retelling so much as just a telling, um, and I just honestly thought that it had so much potential, but it didn't quite live up to it. Um, okay, right, falling behind on time here, come on, let's go. Magpie! Magpie by Elizabeth Day is a brilliant little book. It is a psychological thriller. I genuinely think if you're going to take any book on holiday with you this year, this is the one. Um, if you're going to buy any book for like your parents this year, this is the one. Um, it's basically about a couple who um, have a lodger living with them and the wife in the couple, or the, the woman in the couple, basically starts to believe that maybe um, this lodger knows a little bit too much about them and maybe is a bit of a stalker, strange person. It's hard to explain without giving away the whole plot, because there's a massive plot twist, um, so the less you know, the better going into this, but such a page turner, completely um, draws you in and swallows you whole. I really, really enjoyed this book, and I read it all in one sitting because I just devoured it. It's so good. Okay, right. Four more minutes left. Great Circle is a mammoth of a, bu of a book. It's huge, um, but she's so beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> uh, not the Nicki Minaj meme. Right, Focus Jack. Um, Great Circle is a book about a female pilot who sought to circumnavigate the world, and it's basically her life story, but also we have an actress who is playing her in a movie half a century later, and she starts to recognise similarities between her and this pilot, um, starts to discover more about her story, and she's also going through her own stuff, which I thought was really interesting, but it's very um, inconsistent in terms of how much detail we get between these two characters. I wish that we'd had slightly less detail about the pilot and slightly more about the actress, because she was really interesting too. Um, but overall, beautiful, stunning writing, a really long, sprawling narrative, um, which does go on a few maybe unnecessary tangents, but the overall effect is huge, and you really feel like you've uh, dived in, delved into these people's lives. So, um, it was nominated, shortlisted for the Women's Prize this year, um, but it's not my favourite to win. 
The Promise by Damon Gallagher won the Man Booker Prize, and rightly so. I am in love with this book. I would give it six out of five stars if I could. It's basically about apartheid in South Africa, and we follow a white family, um, and it basically is about the erasure of black, voice black voices and black people within that culture and society. Um, but also, the narrative style is fascinating. It is structured um, over the course of four different funerals. So it's in four parts. Each part is a funeral. And the narrative voice is like a camera. So it changes to different perspectives. Sometimes we're in one person's head, then we move to someone else's, then we're from the perspective of like an inanimate object. Absolutely brilliant and such a great writer. I cannot wait to read more of his work. I want to write a whole thesis on that book. It was so good. Okay, right, two more. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Boy Parts. This is by uh, Eliza Clark. Um, it's a great Geordie voice. Um, I went to university in the northeast of England, so I loved reading a voice from Newcastle. Um, it's kind of messed up. It is absolutely crazy. Um, we basically follow a... we follow the villain. This is written from the perspective of the villain, which I kind of loved. Um, it's kind of fun reading something from the perspe perspective of the bad guy. Um, it's essentially American Psycho, but from the perspective of a woman, and this woman is taking erotic pictures of men, but ends up having kind of strange um, relationships with those men that she takes pictures of, and completely unique, completely original. Um, but I would highly recommend if you want something a little bit weird. Um, okay, one last book. What is it? I can't remember. Electra by Jennifer Saint. Um, Jennifer Saint is writing these fantastic retellings of Greek mythology, but recentering female characters um, whose voices have often been silenced. And so Electra is essentially a retelling of the Iliad and um, the Trojan War. And it's the tale of the House of Atreus, um, who are this kind of like cursed house in Greek mythology. Um, we follow three different female characters, and the it's so action-packed, but it doesn't feel overly stuffed, you know? Um, everything is lingered on for the perfect amount of time. We really feel the emotions of each of the characters, and I just think it is such an accessible way to tell the stories of um, Greek mythology, but through a feminist lens. So, thoroughly enjoyed this book. We got two seconds left. I'm chuffed. Oh yeah, that noise literally sends shivers down my spine. The iPhone alarm noise uh, is a trigger for me, for sure. Whew, okay, um, I'm gonna need to lie down <laughs> for like three to five working days after that. I'm sweating, I'm stressed. I hope that I did these books justice. <laughs> but those are my quick fire reviews of the last 10 books that I read. I hope that you maybe picked up a recommendation from this. I thoroughly enjoyed reading a diverse range of voices and authors and perspectives. And I'd absolutely love to know what is the best book that you have read recently. Please do comment it down below. I'd love to read through them. And let me know why as well, because I need to pick up some new books for my TBR, I think. Tap the like button if you liked this video, and if you're new around here, I would absolutely implore you to join this kind, brilliant, gorgeous community of book lovers. Come and join the family. There's officially one million of us, <laughs> and we'd love to have you here. So thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Thank you for all the support over the years. It has absolutely blown me away. Um, my feet are chilly because you have knocked my socks off. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget the link to Blinkist is down below. You can get a free trial and 25% off premium membership, which is incredible. For now, all the best. Stay in touch. Have an absolutely wonderful day. And I love you loads. Bye-bye.